from the male perspective, what can we do to start to deal with what we've talked about this entire episode in, in this masculinity, I hate to use the word crisis, but this viewpoint that masculinity is wrong, negative to be avoided? I mean, the first thing I would say is don't panic in the words of Douglas Adams, um, because I think, I honestly think that there is a bit of a, the tide is turning somewhat. And I also think the marketplace is going to speak. Actually, it turns out that a lot of women, and here I'm talking about straight women or bisexual women, actually kind of don't mind men being a little bit male in constrained and mature ways, right? Um, and so I'm seeing that start to play out a little bit, just like in the in, the, in my own son's life and kind of so on. Actually, the market the market will start to clear a little bit around this. I think so. We shouldn't panic. Second thing is, we shouldn't kowtow to you know some of the, the extremes of left or right, like toxic masculinity or toxic femininity or feminisms to blame and so on. Like we don't have to. We can just just don't play the game. And again, I've learned a lot from my own sons here. They're just like, they'll watch me get, watching some YouTube video from somebody. They'll say, dad, just don't watch it. Come play some game, video game with me or come out and throw a Frisbee with me. And I'm like, wait, why is it my sons teaching me how <laughs> to avoid polarization? <laughs> but, but I think that, 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 that generation are really quite getting quite good at it. They're getting quite good at this is just BS. Why, why are you falling for this stuff, dad? Um, and they very often go through a kind of Ben Shapiro phase or whatever, and then they usually come out of it. In fact, I've come to believe that Ben Shapiro phase is virtually a rite of passage in and of itself for American young American men, but they always almost always come out of it. And re they realize who he is and what he's doing, and they learn. And I think this last point about institutions is super important. So institutions that signal how to mature, how to be, as men and women, and just as good citizens, are hugely important. And clearly, religions can play a bit of a one-stop shot role around that, right? But a couple, of, and at least actually, some new work out from Raj Shetty showing that re that religious institutions are the only places where people are most more likely to make friendships across social class lines than within their own class. Everywhere else, it's within class lines. But every church denomination in the U.S., with one exception, has what they call a man gap. In other words, there are many more women going to those churches than there are men. So even in church, you're seeing something of a retreat from men. And there are fewer men, in some cases, dramatically fewer men. Part of this is an aging thing in those places. And so whether it's church or synagogue or Boy Scouts or after school clubs or whatever, it's like the one of my main messages to men in particular is get in there, do it, be involved, you know, actually be be a role model for those young men and boys. I was a scout leader myself for a few years. It's like, you know, so it's like, just do it. And so, and the hunger and the need for it is huge. We do need our fathers. We do need our men and we do need our boys. We need them to have a good life and a good society. And so it's like, really, we need you. <laughs> it's like that old war poster, isn't it? Like, like, you know, you're needed. I mean, it's absolutely true. You are needed. Um, and can step in because to some extent it ain't going to happen on its own and some of the sort of semi-automatic rituals and semi-automatic scripts that used to be in existence aren't there anymore so i guess my main conclusion from this is that it's going to take work we have to work on this and we have to work on it together so we have to do it it is not going to fall into our laps mm -hmm.